As I looked at Kevin's mother, laughing heartily, I couldn't help but frown at her lack of class. Kevin's sister seemed taken aback, her face paling as I let out a small chuckle. Oops, could it be true? I wondered silently. My name is Charlotte, and I'm 54 years old this year. I divorced my ex-husband when our daughter Jade was just three. The reason for our split was irreconcilable differences. My ex-husband was unemployed and spent his time drinking. Despite my repeated efforts to talk to him, he never changed. Naturally, our finances were always strained, and I decided I didn't need that kind of family life. We divorced without any child support or alimony. Since then, it's been just Jade and me. I was a housewife until the divorce, and once I had to raise Jade alone, I began working tirelessly. I started with piecework at home, making ends meet despite the constant struggle. Sometimes, with only a day left until payday, I would go without eating to ensure Jade had enough. Through all these hardships, I managed to raise Jade until she became an adult. Now that Jade has started working, I have more free time. I've channeled my experience into creating handmade products, which have now turned into a successful business. My personal life has also seen changes, notably Jade's engagement. She started dating Kevin, her supervisor at work, who is five years her senior. From the photos Jade showed me, Kevin seemed like a fine young man. Unlike her father, Kevin appears to be serious and responsible. I'm happy that Jade has found someone who makes her happy. Life is at a turning point for me too, and I decided it was time to live for myself. Then one evening after dinner, Jade approached me with a rare hesitance. Mom, I have something to tell you, she began. Noticing her change in demeanor, I asked, what's the matter? You seem different. Actually, Kevin and I are getting married, Jade said timidly. Really? That's wonderful? Congratulations, I responded, relieved and pleased. Though I had never met Kevin, I hoped he was as good as he looked in the photos. Jade seemed relieved that I was supportive. Jade then suggested, I was hoping you could meet Kevin this coming weekend. I agreed, wanting to meet the man who was to marry my daughter. We arranged to meet on Sunday. On the day of the meeting, I waited anxiously at home. Just before 11 o'clock, the doorbell rang. When I opened the door, Jade and Kevin stood there. Nice to meet you. I'm Kevin, Jade's fiancé, he greeted politely. I was relieved by his manners and invited them inside. Kevin seemed like a fine young man, and he brought along a gift of famous brand sweets, explaining how he and Jade met. Kevin, stop it, you're embarrassing me, Jade said, blushing. The pleasant atmosphere shifted abruptly when Kevin asked, By the way, is your father at work today? I was startled by his question and noticed Jade's complexion change. She must have kept it a secret from Kevin that we were a single-parent family. In traditional households, single-parent families often face prejudice, and I couldn't help but feel that Jade's secrecy was misplaced. I braced myself to explain the situation to Kevin. Jade might not have mentioned it, but I'm actually divorced from my husband. It's just been the two of us, I said. Kevin's smile faded for a moment, and his face went expressionless. What's wrong? I asked, feeling a twinge of anxiety. Maybe it was a mistake for me to be the one to bring it up. But just as quickly as his expression had changed, Kevin was smiling again. It's nothing, please don't worry about it, he said, his smile returning. I tilted my head, confused by the sudden shift in his demeanor. I couldn't bring myself to ask any more questions at that moment. The wedding preparations continued smoothly, and Jade seemed excited, often asking me for my opinion on things like her dress. What kind of dress should I choose, Mom? What do you think would be nice? She would ask. Well, I think your favorite would be perfect, I replied, though I was somewhat distracted. Kevin's expression from that day kept replaying in my mind, especially the moment when his face went blank. I couldn't shake the feeling that his family might have strong views about single-parent households. So, I asked Jade, did Kevin say anything about us being a single-parent family on the way home that day? Do you think his family might be opposed to the marriage? Jade looked puzzled. He didn't say anything special, Mom. Are you worrying too much? Her reassurances did little to ease my concerns and unfortunately, my fears proved true. One night, as soon as Jade came home, she called my name with a somber expression. I was startled and asked, Jade, why the long face? Did something happen? Jade remained silent for a moment, an unusual sight given her typically optimistic nature. Eventually she spoke, though it was clear she struggled with her words. Actually, Kevin's family isn't happy about our marriage, Jade said with a downcast look. They're upset because we're a single-parent family. 
They think Kevin might have a hard time because we're poor and from a single-parent background. I felt a pang of sympathy for Jade. That's awful. It must be incredibly painful to hear such things from the in-laws. I asked her seriously, did Kevin's mother actually say that? Jade nodded silently, confirming my worst fears. I was enraged by what I'd heard. It was infuriating to think that we were being judged as poor simply because we're a single-parent family. Yes, we've had our struggles, but we've worked hard and built a decent life. I've worked as hard as anyone to provide for Jade. Then Jade revealed something even more shocking. Kevin's sister said a lot of awful things too, she confessed, her voice filled with sadness. She claimed that we're just after Kevin's money and that there's no way they could accept us as family. It's really hurtful. Jade's face looked incredibly lonely and disheartened. I could see how deeply those words must have affected her. It was appalling to hear such terrible judgments about me, especially when they haven't even met me. I could barely believe Kevin's family could be so harsh. What did Kevin say about all of this? I asked Jade, recalling Kevin's expression when he visited our home. His face had gone expressionless, and I wondered if it was because he was anticipating his family's reaction. It seemed clear that his family held strong prejudices against single-parent households. I began to worry about what the future held for Jade and me. But then Jade reassured me. Kevin defended me. After all, I work at the same company as Kevin, so it's absurd to think I'd ask him for money. I felt a wave of relief. If Kevin was on Jade's side, that was reassuring. I murmured to myself that Kevin's support was crucial. If he had sided with his family, I would have been deeply concerned about Jade's future. She would likely face ongoing snide remarks from her in-laws and feel marginalized. However, with Kevin standing by her, things might improve. A few days later, Jade brought up the idea of a meeting with Kevin's family. Mom, I want to have a face-to-face -face meeting with Kevin's family before the wedding, she said. I'm really sorry to ask, but it seems Kevin's mother insisted. She said that it's common sense for your mother to meet her future in-laws at least once. Although Jade apologized for the inconvenience, I agreed to meet Kevin's family for the marriage greetings. I wasn't thrilled about it, but it seemed proper. On the day of the meeting, Jade and I went to a restaurant near Kevin's family home. The choice of restaurant had been explained by Jade. According to Kevin's mother, we can't invite you to their home until we're officially married. There's a fancy restaurant nearby that should suffice. The restaurant, chosen by Kevin's mother, was an upscale venue costing $300 per person for a meal. I occasionally visited it for business but rarely for personal reasons. I was puzzled by Kevin's mother's choice. When Jade had first met Kevin's family, his mother had chosen a nearby cafe. Moreover, Jade ended up paying for Kevin's mother's tea, though Kevin later reimbursed her. I couldn't understand why Kevin's mother was so condescending, especially considering we were the ones invited for the marriage greeting. I couldn't help but frown at the situation. If I, as Jade's mother, refused to attend, it would be Jade who would be blamed for the perceived rudeness. After the marriage, she might feel even more out of place, and that was a problem I wanted to avoid. So reluctantly, I accepted the invitation. I applied light makeup for the occasion. Although I usually wear full makeup for work, I thought it best to keep it understated today. I also chose much plainer clothes than usual. Flashy attire might give the impression of being a big spender, especially among the in-laws, and given the rumors that I was after Kevin's money, it seemed wise to dress modestly. With this in mind, Jade and I entered the fancy restaurant, where we were escorted to a private room. Inside, Kevin and his family were waiting. Jade, Jade's mother, thank you so much for coming today, Kevin greeted us politely. Thank you for the invitation, I replied, expressing my gratitude. I then turned to Kevin's parents and sister, who greeted us with condescending smirks. It was clear we weren't welcome. Thank you for taking the time to meet with us today. My name is Charlotte, and I'm Jade's mother. I look forward to getting to know you, I said cautiously, bracing myself. Kevin's mother smirked and responded, I don't particularly feel like looking forward to it. Kevin admonished his mother, but she remained unfazed. After all, being from a single-parent family is problematic, isn't it? You must be struggling with money. Even your clothes are so plain, she said, looking me up and down before snorting disdainfully. It seemed my decision to dress modestly had backfired. Kevin's sister joined in with snide remarks, laughing, you could have married someone more decent. Kevin really drew the short straw, didn't he? Taking on a poor mother and daughter. I was irritated by her comments. 
Such remarks were incredibly rude, especially for a first meeting. However, disrupting Jade's marriage was not an option. With a sigh, I reluctantly took my seat, trying to keep my composure despite the uncomfortable situation. I chose not to retort despite my irritation. The in-laws seemed amused as they watched me while Jade looked at me with concern. Kevin appeared slightly angry, his brow furrowed at his family's lack of manners, but his mother was in high spirits. We've reserved a course meal for today. It's $300 per person, she announced excitedly to her daughter. I'm really looking forward to it. The meals here are quite expensive, so we must make the most of it. Her enthusiasm was palpable, and Kevin's father nodded in agreement. After a while, the staff brought out the dishes, a colorful array of amuse poaches presented as three different types on a single plate. They all looked delicious, but to my dismay, only water was placed in front of me. I was about to call the staff back, but they had already left. The solitary glass of water felt like a stark reminder of our status. Kevin was dumbfounded by the scene, and his sister, possibly aware of the slight, snickered. Jade noticed too, and said anxiously, Mom. Kevin's mother, with a smirk, declared, Oh, the poor can make do with water, right? She burst into laughter, clearly enjoying the situation. I frowned at her lack of class. What does this mean? I asked, bewildered. Despite being invited to this restaurant, it seemed they had no intention of hosting us properly. My irritation grew as I realized the disrespectful intent behind their actions. Kevin's mother continued to mock me, her voice dripping with disdain. Not only are you from a poor single-parent family, but you're also slow. We have no reason to welcome someone as worthless as you, she said, scrutinizing my outfit from head to toe before snorting derisively. Her husband nodded in agreement, as if it were only to be expected. It's shameful to be a single parent. A woman abandoned by her husband is nothing but flawed, he added with a burst of laughter. His assumptions were baseless and unilateral, but he didn't seem to care. I found his comments truly unacceptable. Kevin's sister joined in the mockery, laughing merrily. I wouldn't want to end up like her, working for low wages. It's really pathetic to have given up on femininity, she said, looking down on me as she spoke. The whole situation was painful and humiliating, but I struggled to maintain my composure for Jade's sake. I felt a pang of sympathy as I saw Jade's face. She looked like she was on the verge of tears. She must have felt responsible for putting me in this difficult situation. Jade was visibly downcast, and I had reached my limit of patience. I couldn't remain silent after being demeaned like this. It was time to stand up for myself. Enough already with the gaining up and bad-mouthing. Aren't you ashamed as adults? Kevin shouted, his voice filled with frustration. I was taken aback by his sudden outburst in my defense. Jade and I were both shocked by Kevin's anger towards his family. His face was flushed and he was clearly upset. However, his family remained unmoved. His mother continued to laugh joyfully, saying, there's no need to defend poor people. Why are you so angry? His father nodded in agreement, as if to say Kevin's words had no impact at all. I was appalled by his parents' lack of empathy. It seemed clear that they were lacking in basic decency. As my irritation boiled over, I decided it was time for a counterattack. I had an ace up my sleeve that might surprise them. At that moment, Kevin's sister began staring intently at my face. I accidentally glared back at her, and she muttered something to herself. Suddenly, her face went pale as she seemed to recognize me. I couldn't help but let out a chuckle at her reaction. She trembled as she looked at me, clearly rattled by the realization. Noticing her condition, her father asked in confusion, What's wrong with you? You've been acting strange. The mother also seemed surprised and expressed concern. Oh no, you're as pale as a ghost. Are you feeling unwell? Despite her words, her daughter's trembling didn't stop. It was clear that she had made a connection. Quietly, she asked her father, Da, the company you work for is Thompson Handicrafts, right? She stared at him, seeking confirmation. Thompson Handicrafts is a small to medium-sized company with about 100 employees, and I was familiar with it because it's related to my work. Her father laughed off the question. What's with the sudden curiosity? I may not look it, but I work hard as the head of the sales department, he boasted and through my connections I even got you a job at our company. You should be grateful, he added with a hearty laugh. It was clear that his comments had defeated and disheartened her. Her father, puzzled, asked, but why are you mentioning this? Are you trying to boast about your full-time position? This poor woman is probably just a temp worker, he sneered, 
looking down at me with disdain, as silently vowed that he would regret his words. She sighed and began to explain, Dad, don't you know who our company's clients are? Her father looked puzzled. Our clients? Kevin's mother, a full-time homemaker, wore a blank expression, seemingly unable to grasp the situation. She continued, though with some difficulty, I've met Jade's mom before at the company. She was wearing heavier makeup then, so I didn't recognize her immediately. Her father seemed confused. What do you mean, inside the company? I remember the faces of all employees, including part-timers, but I don't recall such an old lady. I frowned at being called an old lady, but he seemed preoccupied with other thoughts. Hearing the mention of the company, he appeared to be desperately trying to recall something. I realized it was no surprise he didn't remember me, as we had never interacted directly. She continued apologetically, Jade's mom, I'm truly sorry for everything. The parents grew agitated. Why apologize? There's no need to say sorry to someone so poor, said the mother dismissively. Exactly. Don't you have any pride, apologizing to a poor person like this? Her father yelled. Jade, glaring fiercely at her parents, said, Dad, Mom, Jade's mom is actually very wealthy, much wealthier than you. What did you say? Her father demanded, his eyes widening in disbelief. Her mother, equally stunned, shrieked, How could you say such a thing? Jade responded calmly, Jade's mom is the president of the company. I've served her tea in the company's reception room. You know green bags? At the mention of green bags, her father froze, then slowly turned his head towards me, his face paling. I couldn't help but chuckle. Green bags was a brand Thompson Handicrafts had recently collaborated with. Kevin's mother gasped, Green bags? That's the brand with stores and department stores. Even my bag is from there. She glanced at her bag nervously, which I had noticed earlier. As we entered the private room of the restaurant, I had spotted her holding the bag carefully under her chair. It was a familiar sight, she was using it despite the restaurant's high-end etiquette. I chuckled softly and remarked, I'm honored that you're using my brand. It's a magazine freebie, isn't it? Her face turned bright red as she looked down, clearly embarrassed. It seemed she was mortified that her favorite bag was revealed to be a promotional item. I swiftly retrieved my business card from my cardholder and presented it. I'm Charlotte Green, the representative of Green Bags. The parents stared at the card in shock. Her father was visibly trembling as he examined it, while her mother looked equally stunned. I addressed them coolly. It seems a collaboration with Thompson Handicrafts might no longer be feasible. What a pity. His face registered immediate alarm. Why? That was the project President Thompson was most invested in. If it falls through, what will happen to our company? His voice quivered with fear. His wife, confused, asked, What's going on? I explained, Thompson Handicrafts has been struggling financially. The interest in handmade crafts has waned significantly. When I was younger, my mother would sew everything by hand, but now, cheap mass-produced items are the norm. Thompson Handicrafts has been hit hard by this shift, and their sales have been declining year after year. President Thompson proposed the collaboration as a last-ditch effort to revitalize the company. Initially, I wasn't very interested in working with a small to medium-sized company like Thompson Handicrafts, but President Thompson's passion was compelling, and I eventually agreed to collaborate on producing bags. However, that's no longer relevant. The father continued to tremble, clearly frightened by the news. Ignoring his fear, I added, there's little benefit in continuing the collaboration. I was initially swayed by President Thompson's enthusiasm, but it's not a priority for me anymore. I fixed a cold stare on the father, who was sweating under my gaze. Suddenly, he began to profusely apologize. Despite his desperate pleas, Jade and Kevin looked on in surprise at his deep apology. I'm truly sorry, he said, bowing deeply several times. His apologies seemed to be more about protecting his own interests than expressing genuine remorse. From my perspective, they held little weight. I spoke with an icy tone. An apology now, after all the disdain you've shown towards Jade and me? Do you really think an apology can fix everything? Your mindset is incredibly naive. Realizing his apologies wouldn't alter the situation, he quickly stood up, clearly more interested in saving face than offering genuine contrition. His wife, still puzzled, addressed me with a flippant smile. We're going to be family, so you can forgive us, right? I'm a big fan of green bags, and since we're family now, 
I should be able to get some products for free, shouldn't I? I was so taken aback by her audacity that I couldn't immediately respond. Kevin interjected with a grimace, Mom, that's entirely unreasonable. Her request was beyond belief, yet she seemed unfazed by the reaction. Why not? You must have plenty of stock. It wouldn't hurt to give away a few items, she persisted, both her husband and daughter watching in disbelief. I replied flatly, our products are not given away for free, especially to those who are still strangers to us. Her frustration was evident, but Jade and Kevin are getting married. That makes us family, right? You're a president, you should be providing financial support, she said nonchalantly, still harboring her earlier disdain. It was clear she hadn't reflected on her behavior at all. Kevin, unable to contain his anger, rebuked her. Mom, you've changed your attitude just because you found out she's a president. Aren't you ashamed? His mother laughed it off, unbothered. Presidents have money to spare, right? Surely you can share a little with us. I quietly told her, even if Jade and Kevin get married, I have no intention of associating with you. Her surprise was palpable as she approached me. Don't say that. Once Kevin gets married, we'll be family. Giving away a bag or two wouldn't hurt. I was truly irritated by her persistence. Just as I was about to respond, Kevin stepped between us, his face troubled. Kevin, I said, noting his discomfort. I knew you were the president, Kevin's father said, looking regretful after Kevin's confession. I kept silent because I was sure my parents would trouble you if they found out. Kevin glared at his father. You knew I would have acted like mom if you had told me. What kind of attitude is that towards your own son? Keep this up and you'll be disowned. Kevin's words shocked Jade, who looked flustered. Kevin continued resolutely, I'd rather be disowned. I'm cutting ties with you. I want to cherish Jade from now on, and I don't need a family that disregards her and her mother. His mother broke down in tears on the spot while his father and sister stared at Kevin, stunned. They likely never imagined he would sever ties with them. Their reaction was a harsh consequence of their own actions. Please live with regret for the rest of your lives, I added coldly. I imagine you'll face many hardships in the future. Jade then joined in, stating firmly, we won't even inform you if we have children. Please spare us the agony of having you as grandparents. The room filled with her anguished cry. Kevin's quiet remark, we're done being a family, only deeping their distress. His father and sister, now tearful, seemed to want to plead with us, but we ignored them. After leaving the restaurant, I later learned that Kevin's father and sister had been fired from their company the day after the incident. Despite President Thompson's attempts to persuade me, I decided to cancel our collaboration. I couldn't work with a company that employed people like Kevin's family. When I explained the situation to President Thompson, he was furious. It turned out he had a daughter about Jade's age and couldn't forgive Kevin's family for their actions. The collaboration with Thompson Handicrafts was crucial, and their behavior had jeopardized it. Kevin's father, already advanced in age, and his sister, who had only been a part-time worker through her father's connections, faced bleak prospects for re-employment. Additionally, Kevin's mother, a full-time homemaker, was now cut off by Kevin, who was their sole breadwinner. Desperate Kevin's and Moss came to her company to negotiate. Please collaborate with Thompson Handicrafts. Even if collaboration isn't possible, provide financial support. Our family is suffering isn't helping each other what family does, they pleaded. Their plea was ironic after all the disdain they had shown us. It was laughable and their desperation only underscored their hypocrisy. I firmly told them that neither collaboration nor financial support would be possible. Kevin has cut ties with you as well, hasn't he? Please leave now. Despite my clear refusal, the parents tried to cling to me, but I repeated my warning. Do not appear in front of me ever again. If you do, I will call the police. The mention of the police seemed to get through to them. The father pleaded, anything but the police. We won't come again, and they reluctantly left, their clothes disheveled and dirty. It was a stark contrast to the way they once looked down on others. As for Kevin's sister, I heard she had become reclusive, struggling to find work and facing bleak prospects. She rarely leaves her room and seems resigned to a future filled with uncertainty. Three years have passed since that day. Now, I live with Jade and Kevin. Ideally, as newlyweds, they would have their own place, but Kevin suggested we stay together for Jade's safety in case of emergencies. Kevin and Jade manage most of the housework since my work keeps me busy. I am truly grateful for their support. Recently, Jade approached me with a serious look which made me anxious. 
But then she smiled brightly, saying, Mom, it looks like I'm going to be a mother. She lovingly stroked her belly, and my heart swelled with joy. Congratulations, Jade, I said, hugging her tightly. Kevin, too, was beaming with happiness. Though we know challenges lie ahead, I am confident we can face them together. I look forward to meeting my grandchild and embracing our bright future. A smile naturally spread across my face as I imagined the happiness to come.